Hi everybody, this is Diane. I have put in a hard couple of days work. I helped my daughter yesterday clean out her spare room, which has been a collection room for, oh, I don't know, three or four years. <laughs> and she's, you know, doing something with it now, so I helped her clean it out. And today I worked on my attic. I'll talk, I'll talk more while I'm crafting. I figured it's time for me to just slow down and do a little crafting. I'm going to make some master boards, but they're going to be small ones, and I'll tell you why in a minute. But I want to make ephemera for my uh, music journals that I'm going to be making. And there was one more thing I wanted to do, and I didn't do it. But I'm going to go ahead anyway. So the reason I'm using these small pieces of paper is because when I print my um, labels for my orders, my Etsy orders, it will only print one label per sheet. So you have half a sheet that's just wasted. And I use my less expensive paper for that, just basic printer paper. But I hate throwing away all of this paper. So... I stapled some together to kind of use as scrap paper to write on and stuff, but I have these pieces from orders that I just packed up yesterday. So I decided, instead of using a full sheet of paper or something bigger to make a master board, I'm going to use these because I just want to cut them into tag shapes or pocket shapes and things like that. So this will be big enough. If I need something bigger, I can make more later. I have a variety of vintage music to use as the backgrounds and I also have these ads from my magazines, my vintage magazines. And I have some other pieces that I can use um, after I do the background to embellish with. The thing I was going to do that I didn't before, you know, in preparation for this was I was going to print a few of these pages on the less expensive paper and maybe use some of these elements too. But maybe that'll be a separate video. I'll just collage the backgrounds today. See, I could use something like that on it. But I don't want to use these because I printed on the back side. So, I'm just going to start. I've got some paper here I can use for gluing. So I'm just going to start and tear some paper and start gluing. I have a variety of vintage music, as I said, because I want it to be, if you have different colors, for example, you can see a difference, a contrast there, and that just makes it more interesting. Since I'm pretty much just using music, I'll use some other papers too, but I want to use mostly music for the backgrounds. A master board is something you decorate. You can do it with mixed media. So you can just have mixed media work on it, um, all different kinds of painting and things like that, or a collage or a combination. And then you have, usually it's a larger piece. Sometimes it can be, you know, bigger. I made master boards when I did my um, Wizard of Oz journals a while back and had colors on it. I don't even remember what I did. I think it did involve some paint or ink or something and collage. And then I cut it up and used it for different elements in the journal. So that's what I'm doing here. But I'm not doing um, mixed media. I'm just doing collage. Once I have the background done and then I cut it into the shape that I want for a pocket or a tag, then I can add embellishments. <coughs> so my uh, my attic was a big disaster area because of um, getting a new roof this summer, this past summer, and I didn't even think about stuff in the attic while they were pound, 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 pounding away on my roof. But of course, the first time I went up there after they had done the roof, I was shocked. It was black, powdery grit all over the place, plus chunks of wood and little nails that had come out. 
So everything that was up there was covered in that black powder. It was pretty bad. So this is actually, just so you know, this is actually um, a fly leaf from one of the books that I made, that I used to make journals with before. Um, I have scraps of scrapbook paper, too, from the previous books that I want to use on the backgrounds. So anyway, I had to clean everything off. I mean, things get dusty and dirty in an attic, but not like that. So anyway, my husband loved board games. And he didn't just play board games, he collected board games. Every birthday, Father's Day, Christmas, he got board games. And he played them. He had people that came over to play games with him, including our children. Our grown-up children liked to play games with him. And... There were guys that were like our son's age that would come pretty much. For a while, it was every Sunday night they were there to play games, which was nice. That's what kept my husband's mind sharp, you know? Whoops. I mean, he not like he was old, but the older we get, the more we need to do to keep our minds sharp. So, and he just loved it. And sometimes he would just sit at his game table and have a game out and plan strategies. He loved strategies. I wouldn't play games with him because I don't do strategy. And he didn't do the games that I liked, like word games. He didn't do those. So, I mean, when, when we were younger, I did play games with him, but then I realized I wasn't enjoying it. <laughs> so I didn't play games. So anyway, the attic was full of, had a lot of boxes of his old games. Well, not old, but some of them were. And they were all dirty, you know, so I had to clean them off. And the kids had already taken the games that they wanted after he passed, except my daughter had a couple boxes of games up there. And my husband actually had on his computer, he had a list that he kept updated of who should get what game if he passed away. And and he even had the grandkids' names on them, even when they were babies. He put their names on the... Because he didn't know when it would be when he passed away. But he wanted everybody to know that they would get a game, one of his games. So her games, most of her games were still up in the attic. She took some of them, but she still had some up there. And, of course, other stuff that was up there, you know, just attic stuff. <laughs> and I worked really hard today to get it cleaned up. My daughter and her husband came over, and she went out, and she went up and determined which pile of games was hers, and she took them with her. And the rest are still up there. I've got four big boxes of games still after people have taken games. <laughs> I still have four big boxes that my son is going to come and look at and he's going to see if the guys that used to come and play games, if they would want any of these and then uh, whatever's left, he's going to see if he can sell them on eBay for me. He sells games on eBay, games and other things. Um, I should probably ink that, but I don't think I'm gonna. So, other than some boxes of trash that have to come down, but I'm gonna wait till I get a dumpster. And I'm not gonna get a dumpster yet. Um, other than the trash, there is four boxes of games, and I pretty sure everything else got brought down today. So I'm going to be sore tomorrow. My legs are going to be so sore from going up and down the stairs because not only did I do the attic stairs, but I had to keep taking stuff 
downstairs. So I was going up and down two, two flights of stairs all day long. And then when my daughter and her husband were here, they also went down in the basement and I went down with them. Um, why did we go to the basement? I can't remember why we went down there. But he um, took my husband's tools. I have a toolbox that has whatever tools I might need in it. So I will have one small toolbox to take with me. But he had a lot of tools and power tools and stuff. So my son-in-law loaded stuff up and got rid of that for me. So that's good. He's taking it to his basement. So when I got tired of going up and down the stairs and my legs really needed a break, I would work on the dining room. Um, so I packed up my china cabinet. It's a china cabinet that's been in my family for a few generations. And I have been collecting pieces in it. A couple pieces are also from my family that you know we've had for generations. Each of my sisters and I got to pick a few things when my mother moved. And I have some other things that I've collected. I have a few pieces of Fenton glass. And anyway, I sent pictures of some of the things to my sisters to see if they wanted them. And they both selected some things. So that's one master board. So I can cut that this into a tag. I think I like this part right here for a tag because I like this over here. And then further embellish it. And then um, do make a couple corner uh, tuck spots out of this part or something. So I'm going to let the glue dry and then I'll cut some. And this was a, you know, not an expensive piece of paper. It's the less expensive, thinner weight, lighter weight paper. But when you glue all this stuff on it, it makes it sturdy enough to use for tags. And, sorry, I had to check that text. It's not anything I have to answer right away. So now I'm going to do some more. So I packed... I emptied my china cabinet and then I started putting things back in there when my sisters told me what they wanted. They each have a shelf in the china cabinet <laughs> with their things on it. So when I go to Sister Day, the first week of, of uh, February, we're having another Sister Day. That's a big piece, but I'm going to go for it. I can take their pieces with me. But I've been wrapping other pieces up in bubble wrap and packing it. Some of the things I'm packing in a box for me because like, I don't know if I'm going to have room to have a little curio cabinet or something in my house. But I don't want to give away everything. So I'm packing some stuff up for me. And then if I have to, if I don't have a space for a curio cabinet, then I will do something with it later. And maybe you guys don't care about all this stuff that I'm talking about. But I'm just chatting while I'm crafting. I can even use just a piece of blue. Looking for my the terrier where I want. Well, maybe I'll just use my demo scissors. That'll be easier with cardstock. Makes a nice deckel edge.
You know, I'm just trying not to think about it too much, but I want to have different colors in it. So, after my daughter and her husband left, I finished bringing stuff down from the attic. Oh, I did put some stuff out at the curb, you know, just little, I don't know, just stuff from the attic. And people stopped and picked it up. Some shelves to, that he stored games on, or even DVD shelves. Sorry, that's a call I don't want. I'm getting so many of them. So it feels good to have made some progress. Tomorrow I'm supposed to go to White Sox with my friend. I think I had said in a different video that I was going to go last Tuesday to a couple of antique malls or flea markets or something with my friend. They're indoor ones. And uh, then she found out that one that we wanted to go to um, isn't open on the day we were going to go. They're not open on Tuesdays. So we arranged to go tomorrow. So that'll give me a break from packing and cleaning and stuff. So if I find anything really cool, I will show it to you. Hopefully I won't find much because I don't want to bring more stuff in the house. Uh, when I help my daughter with her spare room, that's where all her craft supplies were that she never gets to use anymore. She's so busy and she just couldn't get in there to use it. She's keeping her stuff, but she did get rid of a lot. And I was proud of her for that. She has a hard time getting rid of stuff and she gets nervous about having me come and help her because I'm all about getting rid of stuff you don't need and uh, she takes after her dad and well I might need this later mindset you know um, but anyway she had a bunch of stuff that her ex-mother-in-law had given her um, stamps and a big shot. She gave her a big shot and a cuddle bug and a silhouette. She offered them to me, but I have a big shot. <clears throat> and if I have a big shot, I don't need a cuddle bug. And I have a cricket. It's old school cricket, but I don't know anything about the silhouette. So if you know, actually, I think she took the silhouette to the Salvation Army today. So never mind. I can't change my mind on that. But anyway, there were also um, dyes to go with the Big Shot and the Cuddle Bug. And they were the, the thick, blocky dyes from Sizzix. And so she gave them all to me because she's not keeping any of the cutting tools. So I brought them home. And I... tried them out. So ones that I don't want to keep, I'm going to sell in my Etsy. I'll give her the money for them. And the stamps also. We just put a lot of the stamps in donation going to the Salvation Army. No, no, we, we didn't. We saved them in a box. I didn't bring them home because I'm trying to, you know, get rid of stuff. So they're in, uh, I think, two boxes in her house so that when I have a chance I can get them and I can put them in my shop. So you'll have that to look forward to. But I did keep some of the the dies. I have um, a desk that I got at a flea market or a rummage sale last year. A couple years ago I guess. 
and I use that. I have my Cricut and my Big Shot sitting on it, and I use the drawers to store the dies and the embossing folders and stuff like that. So it's not like they're going to take up any more room in my house because I had room in my drawers for those dies. Nope, I liked it this way. I'm thinking too much, aren't I? I don't need to make arrangements. I just need to glue stuff down and cover up this white space. That's all I need to do. that I bring home from my daughter's house. She's got lots of um, scrapbook paper that she wants to go through, but she said she'll probably keep most of it, which is fine. I don't want any more scrapbook paper. I glued that down, and I that's okay. Put a decal there. Might as well glue some more. After I do this one, then I'll cut up the other one into pieces. Need something behind that. Feeling hungry. I had cottage cheese and crackers for lunch and now I'm hungry. Got a trouble part of a trouble clef on it. But I like those music notes. So saving all these little scraps from my last music journals that I did was a good idea. This paper has to dry. And these papers aren't even cut. Uh, <coughs> oh, sorry. They're not even cut straight because I just, you know, lopped them off where the, so I could get the label, shipping label. That's okay, because I can even it up now. All right, I need my 
cutting board or my paper cutter. I guess that right there is the uneven edge. Now it's even. Now I wanted to use this part here for a tag. So how wide do I want my tag? It's pretty wide. Let's do two and a half. That's a good width for a tag. And now I have this left. So I think that will be two pockets that way. How wide is it? It is five and three quarters. doesn't have to be exactly even. So two and a half would be half of five. I'll put it right there. Look at that. Oh, slightly different. But pretty close. So now I have a tag. I better cut that in its tag shape so I know which one is the tag because they're, they are pretty close in size, aren't they? So maybe I'll make them all tags. And of course I'll have to ink the back. If you don't want to do that, you could use patterned paper, ledger paper, um, coffee dyed paper to do your master boards on. But since some of them are going to be pockets, I don't want to waste stuff like that because you won't see the backs. Put a reinforcer on there that I've already inked. It's a little bit off center, but that's okay. So once I ink the back, there's a nice tag. I like that tag, but it's not done. I mean, it looks pretty just like that, but we can add something else to it. I have these little, I guess, cigarette card size or tea card size pictures of ladies playing music. And these are from, they're not from the kit, but they're from the same seller. So the images are the same images that are in the kit. So I could put something like that on there. Um, I have a piece of paper doily. that I could put on there. Maybe it'll show up more down here against that brown. <clears throat> and I think by putting some seam binding or something in the hole, I think that'll be good enough for that tag, don't you think? Alrighty. There's one tag. <clears throat> I think I'll pick up the blue there and put some blue seam binding in it. It is a different shade of blue. What's this? That one matches it better sea green.
there. Now, packets. I don't have to use these cards on every one, but I'm just checking them out. We also have these words and other and quotes and images from that paper pad that I use for the other journals. I still have quite a few of those pieces left. This one just says music. Try something here. Just cut this into a fishtail. Try it there. Mm, I think we need some lace. I think we always need some lace, don't you? Didn't put lace on the other on the tag because it has a doily. And I don't know, I think this is gonna be too wide. Yes, it will, way too wide. So we better take that into consideration. I cut the pages for the journal the same size as this, so I am gonna have to cut this. Otherwise, I could make it a side pocket like that. But then, if I had decorated it the way I had it, then the word would have been sideways. And obviously, I'm not gonna glue it on this page. I'm not gonna cover up that violin. Where's my pencil mark? It's lost in all the music notes. Oh, there it is. I see it. Okay, so this might change the arrangement. Let's cut this the same. It's going to cut off most of that brown music there. But I don't want to cut this part off. a little shorter. And I think I will ink around the edge of this.
I want to say thank you for my loyal customers who purchased my glue book so quickly. And I have them packed. I'm going to mail them in the morning, of course. Today is... Um, what, day, what day is today? Today's Wednesday. So I'll be mailing them Thursday morning as I head out of town to go meet my friend to go to the antique malls. I was actually planning to go today. I had them all packed. But I was busy in the attic and I just am too tired. The boxes that I'm mailing are heavy. Some of them. And I just didn't feel like dealing with more heavy stuff. Lugging things. I think it would have taken me two trips from the car to the post office because the boxes are big and bulky. And I have quite a few packages. I haven't even attempted to go onto the post office website to have packages picked up, which I was told I could do. Maybe I'll try it this evening. If you, you have to have it done by a certain time. If you want them done the next day. So, it's something I should probably look into. So there's one pocket. So, say this is the page. It could be on there. And something go in there. Okay. Now I have this one. Let's put these, this gypsy couple there. Do they have music? She has a fan. He's probably playing some music, but it's not really showing up in that smaller portion of the picture. So let's do this one. This lady playing a, some sort of a stringed instrument. These are my fabric pieces, little snippets of fabric. That edge is finished, it won't fray. This is a scrap from a vintage tablecloth. I love this soft, soft woven tablecloth fabric. It kind of blends in too much, I think. I'm going to call that good. They don't need to have a ton of stuff on them because you want the collage to be a part of the design too. I didn't use any of my vintage advertisements yet. All 
All right, two pockets and one tag. Done. Well, that would be a nice pocket there. So maybe I'll cut the tag from this side. This is the uneven edge. There's a little bit of white showing, so I'm going to cut that there. So now I'll cut this at two and a half inches since I like that tag size. There's not a lot of collage on that. It's a music background, the um, fly leaf, and then just a little piece of vintage music. But I think I'll use some of the advertising on this tag. that completely wrong. I had that angled incorrectly. Well, I can't leave it like that. So I'm going to make a shorter tag. You probably saw me doing it wrong too, didn't you? So I hold it there and then flip it over. see what we have for these vintage advertisements. I like this one with the musical note as a flag. For Ithaca Institution of Public School Music. It's for Ithaca, New York. I'm going to cut along this shape. big for that. I'll, I'll save that for a larger tag. Granberry Piano School. And a piece of lace behind it maybe. to wash this. It was so grimy. I had I had gotten a box of just a bunch of bits of old tatting along with other stuff. And I was so thrilled to find all that tatting. So that makes a nice little background for that. It's kind of subtle. I think it's going to be hard to glue it. But we're going to give it a good try.
go. My music. Piano school. This is in New York, New York. East 61st Street. And I'm just wondering about a, a little embellishment. Maybe that's too big. That's too big. So maybe I'll just leave it that way. I'll add some seam binding to it. Um, I could make another tag out of this and then have a pocket. That way I would have three tags and three pockets. And that would be one tag for each signature and one pocket for each signature in one journal. But I'm making two journals. Did I say I wanted this to be the pocket? No, I'm going to make it, I think I did say that, but I'm going to make it this way. So this will be my tag. Make sure I do it right. I like these dark brown reinforcements. I inked them and stamped on them, but the stamping is very subtle. I don't know if you can see it. Um, I had a particular advertisement piece that I wanted to try. It might be too big. Let me see if I can find it. in my pile of stuff here. Not seeing it. So I'll just go with one of these. So we have organs. There's a metronome here somewhere. Oh, that's a long piece. I think I want to use this as a side pocket maybe. I'm not sure. Or a belly band. There's a metronome. Metronomes are used to keep time, especially for a um, piano teacher. They will set the metronome for the tempo that they want the student to use, and then they have to keep the, the tempo with the metronome as it tick, tick, ticks away. <clears throat> Just in case you didn't know what a metronome was. Look at that old, old crochet. So pretty. I think I'm going to have to use that. But I'm going to put it on top. Yes, this would come unraveled because I cut it but it's going to be glued down, so that will be fine.
It's so much easier to collage on a large piece and then cut it up than to collage onto all the separate little pieces, at least for the background. And then you can add the top layer of your collage once you have it cut to the right size and shape that you want. Some, excuse my arm reaching there. I'm going to get some seam binding for these two. I like to crinkle it up. Works better if I wet it. And I might add a little bulb pin with something dangling on these tags before we're done, or before they go in the journal, I should say, because we're almost done with this video. And what color do I want for this? Let's take this brown color. I'm glad I had time to make a video today. I didn't really think I would. And uh, if I do one tomorrow, it'll just be whatever I purchase, if I purchase anything when I'm out shopping with my friend. It's probably all it'll be tomorrow. Don't know. Who knows what tomorrow brings? All right, and then uh, one more pocket. This is going to be a deeper pocket. I think I'll leave it that height. Uh, let's see. It goes this way. Nope, this music is going to be sideways, and that's fine. I don't think I will leave it that, that deep of a pocket. I don't really like it. Actually, maybe if I do it this way, and it could be a tuck spot. Like it. Let's see if I like that. Yeah. I think I'll do that. Maybe just trim a little off the bottom. I don't want to trim it off the top because I'd lose that little bit there. And I want the variety of papers to show. There. That's a good tuck spot size. And I think I'll just use that piece. Pretty sheer blue lace. That looks good behind it. 